Hi everybody, Nate here from WASD20. Welcome back. Today I am going to be talking about what you might do to fill in some of the more empty spaces on a fantasy map like this one here. As you are going about your business, you might notice that you have forests, you have lakes, you have major landmarks, you have cities and towns, and yet there might be some empty space in between those things that just doesn't look quite right. So what can you do to fill some of that in? That's what we'll be talking about today, and I'll be showing you how I've been doing this recently. Before we get going with the drawing, I do want to take a moment to thank the patrons. These people are making it happen. I am so grateful for their support. If you're interested in learning more, you can check out patreon.com slash WASD20. There are some small rewards for becoming a patron too, including occasionally getting input in the form of voting on, for example, what book you want me to review next or what video you want me to film next. And patrons actually did choose this video from amongst a number of options. So thanks patrons. Keep on rocking it. So as I said, today we're going to be taking a look at how you might go about filling in some of the empty space on a fantasy map like this. This is a recent commission I'm working on, and you know, traditionally uh, when I've done my maps, I've got mountains, I've got forests, I have um, rivers and lakes, and once in a while I might have another interesting feature like you know a little cliff or this, this huge kind of chasm here or a canyon. Uh, but I was trying to discover more ways to fill space on my maps. Uh, and it was in particular with the Eris Dune map, which I will put a picture of up here. And you can see that this picture that I sent to uh, my client, Jesper Schmidt, uh, he, um, well, I thought that it just, it looked too imbalanced, partially because the trees were only, were, were going to be limited uh, to only certain areas. And there were just other parts of the world where there were no trees. That's just the way his world works. And um, so then I felt like, man, I really got to do something uh, because there's all this blank space. There's no mountains. Yeah, and I did add some more mountains, some more hills. Um, but what else can I do? And here's what I came up with. And so you can see, um, I ended up filling the space with all sorts of things. Uh, and I really wanted very little blank space because it created a visual imbalance to me. And I still think in hindsight, perhaps I could have had my line weight a little heavier uh, to match the rest of the map. Uh, but when you're looking at it close up, I think it does look a lot better than it did with all that blank space. All right. So now back to the map that I'm working on here. This is another commission. You might have seen me working it on, uh, working on it on the mappening recently. Uh, you can check out the mappening 11 and 12 in particular. I think those are the ones where I was working on this. I've talked about this a little bit on those videos, but I wanted to do a nice uh, quick short one for those of you who didn't catch those, just to show you the basics of how uh, to fill in space and how to, um, I guess, add, to, add some variety to your terrain on your fantasy maps. So a couple of things I've done on this one you can see and on the other one too, the Eris Dune map. Uh, one thing, easy thing is other than mountains, you should have some hills. And hills fit naturally around mountains. That's a really easy thing to do. The foothills of mountains and um, you can just make hilly areas in other parts too. And that's something that's uh, fairly easy to do. Just uh, taking a blank sheet of paper here. We're just talking about doing something like this. They can be uh, fairly rounded hills, or they can kind of have a little bit more of a point to them. Uh, and you can, you can press quite hard or get a nice thick marker, or uh, you can just kind of barely scratch it on there, and uh, depending on how, how you want it to look. So that's one option, and then you can also add shading to your hills if you want to uh, you know, just make, it, make them stand out a little more. And uh, I would usually do this uh, digitally in Photoshop afterwards, add the shading, but uh, it can absolutely be done with a pen or pencil as well. And uh, I think that looks quite nice to just kind of fill some space on your map. Um, I've seen people even add just little dots here and there. You know, maybe these are just little rocks. Uh, if you want to get more detailed with that, you can certainly say, oh, here's, here's the actual rocks here, you know. A, a pile of boulders. Okay, <laughs> and I, I'm not I'm not very good at that, but sure, you can have some piles of rocks in places. Absolutely. 
But anyway, back to the techniques I've used on this map. Um, in the past, I have done my forests all as kind of one big clump, one big cloudy cluster thing. And um, what I've been doing lately is trying the individual tree method and just kind of experimenting with that and trying that on some of my commission projects because uh, my, my clients are okay with it and they like the way it looks. One thing I really love about it is that it does allow you to kind of add some trees here or there. You know, just little bits like oh, this area is a little empty. So, you know, I added some up here and uh, I think it worked pretty well. So that's just a little way, a little technique you can use, just adding a few trees here and there as well. It might not be a huge forest, but it's just a little wood, right? And when you're doing the, uh, the more traditional method that I have often used, where you're doing this sort of thing for your forests, and uh, you know, maybe you're adding a little bit of uh, texture to it, and then your tree trunks, That sort of thing. It is a little bit harder, but it's still definitely doable to have little bits of forest like that. And uh, you don't have to have huge expansive ones. However, I do like the look of just, you know, two or three trees here or there. I think that's a kind of a cool look. Another thing that I've done with my trees that helps kind of fill up a little bit of space is uh, just do a little bit of shading in the form of just like two lines. So if I'm drawing a couple trees uh, like this. Then I will also just do a couple lines like that. Add a little texture to land and just a little bit of shading as well. All right. What else do we have going on here that I can talk about? Ah, yes, the plains. This is going to be a, a grassy plain area. And uh, a great thing to do with that, in my experience, is just to do some uh, very simple lines like this here and there. And you can do, you know, starting fat and getting narrow. Uh, you could do um, kind of going up in a, a hill almost like that. In addition to drawing hill lines, you could do like hill dots. And I've even seen people kind of do this sort of thing as well. Um, I'll, I'll show some pictures of Max's maps where he does this sort of thing like all over the map. And when it's all kind of textured that way, it can look really cool. And again, it just helps uh, solve some of the visual imbalances of places where there are actual things, landmarks and, and major geographic features. In addition, on my grassy plains here, I mixed in some little, just kind of tufts of longer grass where you're, you're going like that. Maybe just doing three blades that are slightly slanted in. Uh, something like, like that. Another technique I have used in a few places is the swamps. Uh, although that is more of a geographic feature, and once you have those, you still probably have uh, quite a few places to fill up, we'll say. Uh, another thing you can do is just do some terrain lines, I call them, which is very descriptive. Yes, we're doing terrain lines, but I'm just doing some kind of squiggly lines, and then I'm doing some horizontal lines, and I'm just filling in space. It looks like, I don't know, it looks like dirt. <laughs> sort of, maybe, I'm not sure but it does help fill in some space here and there. We can do some dots or something. And um, yeah, you can probably hardly even see those in my chicken scratch here, but I'm doing this sort of thing. And you can see I've done that in places on this map, like up here. I've also done a little bit of it uh, down here, although I should do some more. There we go. And so these are, again, just ways that you can fill in some of the blank space and uh, add some terrain effects to your map. Now, I will say that if you are doing a map digitally, it's a good idea to, in addition to doing some maybe black line work, you're also then going in overlay layer and doing some shading and highlights on some of this stuff. Uh, that's a really good way to go. And just doing some kind of, I don't know, lighter lines going like this if you're doing terrain lines and some darker lines here and there uh, can help add to that and then obviously if you are working in color this becomes a whole lot easier because then you no longer need to rely on line work so much and you can just 
color different areas differently. And, uh, and you can kind of work that in, in natural, organic ways uh, and, and kind of use different effects in Photoshop or in watercolor or more traditional mediums. And uh, it can look really, really good. All right, guys. Well, that's going to about do it for this one. I want to thank you so much for joining me, and uh, I hope you found this useful. I would love to hear what you think down in the comments below. If you just let me know uh, what do you think of these techniques, which ones do you like better or worse, and uh, what other techniques have you seen out there on fantasy maps for filling in some space and just making things look better. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed, and everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.